Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, gotta get down on Tuesday. <laughs> It's Tuesday. We're so glad you're here. You heard of Rebecca Black. Now you got Jenny Green. Kuyaba. <laughs> I was waiting for that joke to come. I was going to let you make it. If oh, you didn't make it within the next like, five or six it. seconds, I would have done it. I know, right? I, it was there. It was coming. Y'all, we're so glad you're here today. Um, today we're talking about dinner party etiquette, uh, both for the host and for the guests. So um, now that people are being social again, we've got some tips for how to not uh, do things that annoy the bejesus out of people who are at the dinner party with you. Right, right. And today we have Caitlin, who is the ultimate dinner party guest. She can work the room like an extrovert, or she can sit in the corner with you while you introvert. Oh, I love that. I can also sit in the corner and eat all of the guacamole. And I will be the one who goes and finds your pets Ah. at the party. So I'm really good at those things. (laughs) Also good at taking something from like a level of funny to a level of now everyone's uncomfortable (laughs) with the joke that I just made. So if you're really into that, have me over. I'm really good at those things. Oh, Jenny over there, you are my beautiful, sassy mannequin all come to life. I love it. Like that movie. That had yeah. um, wasn't it called oh, there the mannequin? Was a, there was a movie called Mannequin. I am thinking of the Christmas movie that my sister loved. That had um, the name of the movie is like Life Size or something, but it's like a Barbie that comes to life. Life Size. Well, yeah. Is it a Christmas uh, movie? Didn't Tyra Banks? Tyra Banks? Didn't Tyra Banks do a movie like that? She did a movie where she was like a life size Barbie. Speaking of Barbie, this is completely unrelated. We have to yes. go see the Barbie movie. We have to go see it. It's our friend date. We're going to go do it. We just talked about dating your friends. Right. This is what we're going to do. Anyway. Okay. 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 Let's catch up. All right. So what's going on? I went to go get my hair done. Those of you who are listeners and have been with us since the beginning, you know that I get my hair cut at a place that is above a grocery store and um, uh, mm-hmm. specializes in men's cuts and fades. <laughs> because that's the name of the place. And um, I yes. wasn't able to get in to get my roots worked on, my roach roots. I wasn't able to get those worked on before coming back from Christmas break. And um, because I'm a little bit vain and I don't want the kids to see all of my growth, I just colored my hair red <laughs> in the kitchen in the kitchen sink, like with a box from Target. And even as I'm doing it, Whatever. my 11 year old daughter is saying, Mom, Letty is going to get mad at you. You know you should not be coloring your hair. Last time you did this, she yelled at you. So I come in, and as I walk in to Cuts and Fades and have a seat, she looks at me while she's working with another customer and says, where are your highlights? Did you color your hair again? Oops. And I just looked at her and I said, well, Abby said that you were going to be mad. She goes, yeah, I'm mad. Good girl, Abby. Yeah. And for the rest of the three and a half hour appointment, she is berating me on coloring my own hair and saying, don't do it. I don't know what's in those boxes. I don't know what kind of chemicals you put on there. I could accidentally turn your hair orange and then you'll be mad at me, even though it's not my fault. She says, next time you are about to walk into Target, you come here and I will just fit you in between people. It might take all day, but I will color your hair. Do not do anything impulsive again. Okay. And then um, she does my color. She does my highlights, cut, you know, whatever. And she's styling me. And she gave me a middle part. Okay, so I haven't had a middle part since middle school. Have you come over to the dark side? Do you love it? Right? I think I might love it. 
Do I love it because yeah. it's trendy or do I actually love it? I don't know. I keep thinking of Rodgers and Hammerstein's uh, Cinderella. Do I love you because you're beautiful? I don't know. Or are you beautiful because I love, because yeah, I I don't love know. you? But um, I'm into yeah. it right now. So uh, here's the thing. I've always been into a middle part, but only mm. if my hair is straight. If my hair is curly, I don't like how the, like, it just kind of turns right, right, into right. a triangle. I, I can <laughs> it's imagine not my that. Thing. I cannot empathize with it, though, because uh, my hair is sure. curled straight all the time. Yeah, no, my hair has some texture. It's curly most of the time. And it's, you can't tell right now because it's up in this hot mess of a bun. But if it's straight, I will middle part it every time. I just, I love how that look is. And I, I've always loved that. I got my middle that. part right here. For forever and when i go get it done yeah you are middle parting when i go get it done i always even with a bun yeah i'm always like no middle part down the middle and she's like but you had you came in and it was off to the side and i'm like that's because it was no. dirty and curly like no part it down the middle that's how i want it done because otherwise it doesn't sit right when i part it down the middle so yeah i'm glad you're here I, I, it's a great place to be if you like it you like it and if you don't i rock both the side part and the middle so do you i'm keeping my skinny jeans though and yeah, I will wear a blanket scarf. Those aren't going anywhere. Every time the temperature drops below 50 degrees. <laughs> oh, well, uh, if we're talking about things that are like kind of outdated, have we already talked about the new show on Bravo, the SWV and Escape show? No. Escape show. Do you remember SWV and do you remember Escape? Those R&B girl okay, groups from Escape, the 90s. But I do not remember SWV think free willy there's that song that has the girl singing with michael jackson in the background and it's the love will be right here song that's swv okay so i loved both of these groups when i was a kid and if you are not a bravo person um you should know that candy burris who is the lead singer of escape is one of the Real Housewives oh, of yeah, Atlanta. She is. Um, also, spoiler alert: yes. um, she may or may not have been on um, the Mask Singer. Yes, she was on. The, didn't she win the Mask Singer? She totes won, and John called it out for the first yeah. episode. He's like, "Oh, it's that chick from Real Housewives." <laughs> he yeah. was like, "Fly above, no, you know, fly above. you can tell it's her." <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> fly above all the haters. Exactly that. Okay, so. Candy and the girls from Escape and SWV, the the three person group, have decided that they are going to come together to create a reality show on Bravo TV, and it's them like on tour and figuring out the logistics of their show. When our powers come by, right? They are rehearsing their R and B shows or R and B songs from the nineties, and I am jamming and loving the drama at the same time this is the stuff of my 90s r&b dreams i am so happy that this show exists and my husband who also has a bravo thing we both just really love it he was like i need to watch that show <laughs> like just from the previews like I'm, I'm interested i'm ready i'm ready and i'm like yeah you are you're gonna watch it and like me having a personal like deep connection to the music that I lived as a kid is like, yeah, we're watching it. And he's like, no, I'm just here for the entertainment value. Like I I need to watch that show. So we started watching it and it is exactly what my heart hoped it would be. So that's one of my obsessions right now. It's just, I love it. It's so good. It's SWV and escape on Bravo TV. Escape. Escape. All right. So here comes my favorite part of the show. This is the gem of the week. Um, This is your opportunity to either laugh alongside me or at me. And in this case, it is at me. Um, As our dedicated listeners know, both my children play flag football. Yes. The update to this season is John is coaching both teams. The four-year-olds and the 11-year-old girls, right? Like, just just pick two more difficult teams to coach. (laughs) All right. So we've got preschoolers and we've got middle school girls. Okay, so um, Mm -mm. he was out in the front yard throwing the ball around with both kids. Abby uses a slightly smaller than regulation ball. And Kit, the four-year-old, his ball is very small because they have very small hands. Um, So small, in fact, that it fits in the storm drain. 
Oh, no. Well, in my mind, the ball goes down the storm drain. It's lost. Sorry. Right? Like, not a big deal. It's not going to, like, impact our ecosystem. Eventually, it'll flush out. We can, maybe it'll even come out in the pond by the end of our house, and we can pull it out of the pond. I don't know, but the ball is gone. No, 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 no. John goes back into the house gets all the tools that he needs to then remove the manhole cover and send Abby down like she's some coal miner in Pennsylvania no, no, no. to go get the ball out of the storm drain. Oh. And, and <gasps> I only noticed as he was putting the manhole cover back on, so I couldn't even stop it. Ah. <laughs> I was like, you did what? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. She had to bend over when she got in there. It's not that deep. Uh, you just put our kid in the drain. Please don't put my children in the sewer. Okay, hold on. Is it now and right? then? Is it now and then, and then, she, then like, where away? she goes into yeah. the storm? Is it now and then? Yeah. And you hear like, is it? Te- yeah. It's te- what's her name? Teeny? Teensy? Yeah. She's like crying and like, Samantha. Oh my, like, oh my if, goodness. What, what no, 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 no. I'm like, I have to fan like, myself. It's fine. it's fine. Well then, Does it like, matter? the next day is when the skies open up and it rains forever. And so I was just like, look, right. this could have happened. Oh my God. It's fine. It was dry. She could touch. She could reach out the top. Oh man. Ah. Okay. Well. Right. Sorry, I'm like fanning. I'm so glad that I caught it. Anxiety. At the end because okay, I would not have let it happen. Right, because you would have been. Yeah. No, Mm-mm. you would have been freaking out. Oh no! Put my kids Mm-mm. in the sewer. He put my kid okay. in the sewer. <laughs> Thank goodness she's tall. I would have gotten lost. <laughs> she's almost as tall as me. Oh goodness, if not taller at this point. Okay, so um. Full full disclosure here. I don't know mm-hmm. the context around this story. I I only know the two lines that I heard from the story. I can gather that it happened around the time that we were supposed to be heading towards bedtime. So like at our house, it's like finish the homework, take a few more minutes to relax. Timer goes off, and then it's um. I hope the timer is telling us like it's time to clean up. And go wash, like have a bath, have a shower, whatever it is. And then we're going to start the wind down process. What time does that timer go off? Like for me, it's like 2.30, maybe 3 in the afternoon. (laughs) It's a biological (laughs) timer, right? It's just that idea that like, oh, it's time for me to wind down. I need to go to sleep. (laughs) Yes. Oh, man. Well, while my mind and body are telling me that 2.30 is the right time, my child is still at school with that, so I can't really use that. Um, but like six fifty, seven o'clock is when we start that wind down process for our family. So um, right around that time, uh, I'm hearing, I'm like doing the dishes, so you can't really hear everything that's happening going on behind me, which is why I, I don't have the full context for the story. But I turn off the sink just in time to hear my husband go to our son boy, you sure made that difficult. And without skipping a beat, my son goes, yeah, well, difficult is my middle name. (gasps) Accurate. Right. (laughs) Right. Sam, difficult. Yes. That works perfectly. We're going to change your initials. We'll add it to your list of nicknames. No problem. So um, if you are wondering... If your child has difficult as a middle name, there's a good chance that they might have already given it to themselves and you're not alone in that situation because, oof, that was rough. It makes me think of that comic where um, the dog says, hi, I'm no, no, bad dog. What's your name? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, poor baby dog. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, goodness. Well that's that's the gems folks let's move into some real talk for this week so we mentioned earlier that um we're talking about dinner party etiquette like how to be a good host and how to be a good guest um 
I'm going to preface this by saying that I did not make all of this up. However, I am adding my own color commentary to this, as Jenny will be. But I loved these tips. I thought they were really smart. This is from an article on PureWow by Sydney Meister or Meister. I'm not sure. But um, I will link that article in the show description so you can read it for yourself. Um, She had some like dinner party and like some sort of experts also contributing to her article. So some of what I'm going to say is not necessarily just my idea, but I am organizing this a little bit differently because I feel like it's important to draw a distinction between some of these behaviors see, as a guest and some of them Was as a host, June Cleaver which doesn't sentence. happen. Yes. What about Emily Post? She was not. No. Um, there is someone okay. who does mention an Emily Post thing in the article. I did not talk about Emily Post. However... Right. I, of course, looked for that name. And yes, it's there. Okay. So I'm going to say this. We tell our child that good manners are how you keep yourself from being embarrassed in a social situation, right? Right. And that is just like, if you have good manners, you can hopefully ward off some social embarrassment. Now, if you're me, you have good manners and you still know how to make things awkward for your guests and for the people around you. So maybe that's just who you are. That said, um, a lot of this just comes down to like, just thinking about someone else in the moment, right? So, okay. So I'm going to start with the guest side of things for how you should behave at these dinner parties. And remember, we're thinking dinner party or like cocktail party. We're not thinking like, you know, a rager, which I don't know how many of us are going to those. If you're one of our audience members, you probably are, have left those days long behind you. Okay. So as a guest, the number one rule is don't offend the person who was kind enough to invite you into their home. That yes? is a great rule. Right. So um, if it's a dinner party, uh, I'm going to start by saying we are in the era of the dietary restriction, right? right? People are mindful of what they can and cannot eat for health reasons, but also for their own personal reasons, whatever those may be. Okay. That said, the host is not responsible for you among all of their other guests. Correct. They can do the best that they can, but like you don't need to be pushy with your dietary restrictions, right? right? They're probably going to ask, right? They might say like, well, I'm going to have this, but I also know that XYZ is, is vegan. So I'm going to also have that, right? Yes. But you don't need to be pushy about it. If you are on a strict eating regimen by choice, I'm going to say, eat what you can on the plate and then like, don't draw attention to why you chose not to eat it, especially in front of the host, right? right? Like, just don't do that. If you're concerned about being hungry, either eat a little snack beforehand, eat your dinner beforehand, or just decline the invitation and say like, you know, I have really strict dietary needs and I just can't, I appreciate the sentiment. Let's get together and do X, Y, Z some other time. Right. As a host, like strive for inclusion, right? Sure. Nothing can be as isolating as food. And you're sitting at a table and everybody has the same plate. It, it doesn't feel great if you can't eat it. Um, so when you invite someone, ask them, do you have dietary restrictions? What are your dietary needs? Mm-hmm. Make it open that conversation so that someone doesn't have to come to you. Um, now, if you ask the question, you got to adhere to it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can't just be like, oh, I know you told me you're vegan, but everything here is made with milk and butter and eggs, so thanks. So thanks. Um, But if you are a guest and you have strict dietary needs, ask, may I bring blank instead of what can I bring, right? Mm -hmm. Say, can I bring a salad? Um, Can I bring a side? Mm -hmm. Or straight up say, like, I have a good friend who is very, very, very gluten-free, right? Like, she just eating something that was cooked in the same pan is enough for her to have a flare up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and so she brings her own food and she says, I know it's weird, but is it okay if I bring my own food? And it's like, yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. I'm so right. happy that you can come. Right. Oh, that works. Yeah. And I like it. she explains, right? Like it's nothing against you. It's nothing against anything that you're making. But I'm highly sensitive. And is it okay if I bring my own food? Yeah. But asking if you can bring a salad or if you can bring a side and you know it's something that you can eat, 
most of the hosts will say, yeah, I'm making pot roast. Bring something that goes with that. Sure. Makes sense. Okay. (laughs) This one is for me. (laughs) We talked about stains in one of our previous episodes and primarily because you and I both make a mess. Please don't use a cloth napkin to clean up your red wine spills. Oh yeah, no. Like if it's a cloth napkin or a linen napkin, like don't, don't do that, especially with red wine. Now I, I am very intentional about red wine and I don't drink it in public because I know I spill on myself, on other things. I did not know that about you. I do not drink red wine in public. I won't do it. (laughs) Even if it's like, if there's like a steak in front of me at a restaurant and like red wine is what goes with that. Okay, fine. Because I'm at a restaurant and I know they're equipped to handle that sort of thing, but oh I don't. I don't drink that red wine. That is so public. good. Mm-hmm. I also Talk get about like knowing yourself, right? I also get like purple lips and purple teeth if I eat, like after like a sip. So I'm just like, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I won't touch it. But I. Spill. I don't drink more than four shots of tequila in public. How's that? <laughs> Talk about knowing yourself. Good yeah. job. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to say this. Spills happen. It's not about the spill. It's how you handle the spill, right? Do you Everyone those knows. brush ups? Do you yeah. remember those? It was like a little thing you slipped on your finger and you would like scrub your teeth after you drank red wine. Yeah. I use it on my lip because I'll have like red. Yeah. Do they still make those? I don't know, but I hope so. I'm over here like using my finger or yeah. like the underside no. of my shirt. Like, yeah. Did people just say I could just use a regular toothbrush instead of that little finger thing? <laughs> Not if you're in public. What are you going to do? Excuse me. Like, just start brushing at the, <laughs> like at the table? No. Yeah, well, you didn't do that thing at the table, did you? Sometimes I'll rub my lip at the table, but it, it rub, doesn't rub look as... Lip. No, I'm talking about yeah. the thing that you would, like, slide on your finger. No. And then brush your teeth. <laughs> no, I don't think I would have done that at the table. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Continue on. No, you're good. Um. So, it's it's more about how you handle that spill. Ask the host what they want you to use to clean it up. Like if they say, hang on, let me go get paper towels. Don't touch anything. Wait until they get the paper towels. If they say, oh, please don't bother. Let me do it. Don't touch it. Let them do it because they probably are saying that for a reason. Please don't try to blot it up and ruin someone's napkins. Like, okay. So, um, if they are using paper napkins mm-hmm. and they are not white also yeah. do not use them to clean a spill because oh, paper stain. napkins have so much dye in them yep. that when you get them wet the dye can then go onto Transfer. the tablecloth mm-hmm. or the carpet or whatever it is that you're trying to clean up you're right so you're absolutely right seriously just say hey i spilled this now here's the other thing your napkin should stay in your lap until the host or hostess picks hers up and puts it on the table if mm. they haven't put their napkin on the table, manners, you know, Emily Post says you keep it in your lap. Really? I did not know that. And if you are getting up mid-meal, um, you neatly fold it and put it to the left side of your play setting. Do not oh. leave it on your chair. Do not hang it over the back of your chair. Um, if you're out somewhere of a certain caliber, someone will come back and refold your napkin for you and replace it. But um, yeah, you don't leave it on the chair. Oh my goodness. I hadn't, I don't know if I'd noticed, but that's interesting information for me. The other piece of this is if you are someone who wears lipstick, blot it, please blot it before you wipe your lipstick on someone's napkin, a cloth napkin, blot your lipstick or make sure it's that kind that doesn't transfer. That happens too, but just don't wipe your lipstick on their napkins. Gross. Okay. Another thing, and this one is going to be tough for people because we all know when you show up at someone's house, especially for some sort of dinner party, you need to bring something for that person. It's like, bring a bottle of wine, you bring whatever it is. Here's the problem with that. When you bring something, you need to ensure that it's not something that's going to take up valuable fridge space. Mm. This person is hosting a dinner party or a party of some sort where there is food, which means there is more food than normal in their refrigerator, which means the space in the refrigerator is lacking. So if you show up with a bottle of wine that needs to be chilled and say, here you go, 
then you're taking up valuable fridge space. Same thing with a six pack, which is even bulkier than a bottle of wine. It's not okay to bring something that's going to take up valuable fridge space. And if you're like, oh, I brought the six pack for me to drink. Okay. It's a dinner party. They probably like put together a menu that has beverages that go along with that. No, you're not. You're not going to yeah. drink your no. six pack while you No, you're not. Cause that's no. just rude. Don't do that. So consider bringing something else. Bring, uh, maybe you can assume this person probably likes to cook, right? Yeah. Head to a local, nice grocery store, find a beautiful um, bottle of vinegar or olive oil at a farmer's market, or just prime that mess to yourself and be like, oh, look at this gorgeous bottle of extra virgin olive oil. Here you go. That can sit on their counter. They can use it later. They don't have to put it in the fridge. That's a big deal. And if you're going to bring flowers, bring flowers that are already in a vase so that you're not making them stop put flowers in a vase during their dinner party and giving them more work to do. Right. In our gifts episode, we talked about wrapping these things in a tea towel so that they get a a little towel as part of their gift. It's a really good idea. Love that. Also dinner party and probably cocktail party too. Don't show up fashionably late. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. Don't be the guest who shows up an hour late. Um, A cocktail party, you probably have like a 10 or 15 minute window to show up, right? Um, You don't want to be the first one there. I understand that. That's always awkward for everyone. However, if it's a dinner party, that means that they're planning to serve food at a certain time and you need to show up on time for that food. If you're the person who is like showing up after the meal is supposed to start, like, come on, don't be that person. It's awful. That's just really bad. And, um, I would say on the flip side, don't be too early either. Oh yeah. Um, because if someone is cooking, they're probably using all of that time and trying to time their meal so that it matches the arrival that they set. Right. So if they said, come at seven and you show up at six 30, I, at my house at six 30, I'm not even dressed. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> I I am fr- uh, frantically trying to chop or get something in the oven before I go upstairs and get dressed, which is always the last thing I do. Yep. Because like you, Caitlin, I spill. And I spill yep. a lot when I'm cooking. Yeah. And I tend to wipe my hands like on my shirt or on my apron. Yeah. So don't show up half an hour before I tell you to. Right. Because I'm not because... ready for you. No, I, I'm going to use that last 18 minutes to wipe myself down with the baby wipe and then slap some <laughs> clown paint on my face and get myself ready to go. Like, so that the last, so the cleanest thing in the house is going to be me, but it's going to be with the baby wipe probably. So just putting that out there. Okay. So those are some guest rules. I'm going to move into host rules now. Sounds great. Okay. As the host, your rule for the night is you are fun facilitator. Okay. I understand that you probably feel like head chef also and head server, right? You're front of house and you're back of house. I get that. Okay. But you're tonight's scheduled entertainment as well. Right. You are fun facilitator. Okay. Mandatory fun is happening around you. That is your job. So don't spend all your time in the kitchen. Don't do it. Okay. The key to being a great host is not being stuck in the kitchen when all of your guests have arrived. Now, if you have one of those houses like I have where literally like your kitchen is open to the entire living room and you're spending your time in the kitchen, everyone's going to be in there with you. So right, you're not going to be able to get things done anyway. You might as well have set yourself up for success by being ready to go when people show up and having it arranged and ready. Okay. So choose something that you can make ahead of time be served in one dish at the table, or if you're fancy and you can get someone to help you with that serving, right? Get someone to make sure that the food comes out to you at a timely manner. That's another cool way to do that, right? And get dessert taken care of by a professional. Unless you are someone who can bake. I'm, I'm a pretty good baker, so I'll say that. But I would rather have something that I could bake ahead of time and then- pre like cut up or whatever so that I can just have it be served and ready to go 
or just choose coffee, right? Like get a professional to do it, make it something ahead of time, or just serve coffee. And when people are done with their coffee, then you can kick them out of the house. <laughs> just make it easy on yourself so that you aren't constantly in the kitchen the entire time and not enjoying your guests because they're there to hang out with you, right? Right. There you go. Okay. Don't seat couples together. At the table, Ooh. you're going to be tempted to seat couples together. And yeah. some couples are going to be like, oh, it, they might not know anyone else. Like whenever I go to an event and I don't know anyone else, I am stuck like white on rice to my husband. Right. Like that's yeah, just no, how I'm it is. Velcro. Right. For sure. However, you're trying to facilitate mingling and you're trying to facilitate conversation. And if you seat couples together, there's a good chance they're going to only talk to each other. And not to other people at the dinner party. How so interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to say split couples up, even if it's across the table. And if you can alternate like male, female. Ah. Now, if there are people who are like non-gender conforming, put them wherever you feel like it makes sense. You can also like group people based on common interests. Right. Right. Like Bobby likes podcasting. Oh, no way. Caitlin also likes podcasting. Maybe I should put them next to each other so that they can talk about podcasting. That makes sense. You can do that here. Right. And if the party is larger than four people, it's going to sound cheesy. It's going to sound very Martha Stewart, but like use a place card. You can put their name on ornamental gourds if you want to, or you can just like put a sticker who cares just like yeah. put it so that people don't go oh well I'll sit here and uh, uh, no like because then you're gonna have people sitting next to people that they're comfortable with and not necessarily having that mingling new conversation right and if you're a host sit at the end of the table yes that's your job right yeah yes okay also all right know that if you sit at the head of the table at a restaurant you are offering to pay Oh, <laughs> according to Emily Post. <laughs> Whoopsie. Keep that in mind. All right. Don't have an extended cocktail hour. <sighs> okay. I, I know where you're going with this and I'm already starting to feel uncomfortable. Okay. The best episode, this is arguable, so I'm just going to put this out there. The best episode of The Office is the dinner party episode. Okay. Ugh. This is the one where the cold open is Michael pretending to cancel late night work and then inviting Pam and Jim over to his house for dinner with Jan. This is the episode where we learn that Michael runs through the glass door because he thought he heard the ice cream truck. This is the one where he dips his food in his red wine. This is the one where he thinks he, he's being poisoned by Jan because her cooking is so bad that he thinks she's trying to poison him. He sleeps on the bench at the foot of the bed. He sleeps on the bench at the foot of the bed. Um, like a dog. She, right. She makes bonfire candles. Um, this is the, the best TV. episode ever. He talks about, he pushes the TV <laughs> into the wall. This is the best episode ever. But remember that Jan is making osabuco and it takes three hours for it to cook. So she traps the guests there for three hours. She says everything else is done, but the osabuco needs to braise for three hours. hours. Oh what? my gosh. Who does that? Do now, not. Let me tell you this. I love the idea that it's a dish that needs to braise for three hours as a like potential host meal yes. because you could get it in the oven yes. at three o'clock and then have time to prep and get the table set and yourself ready. And then when your guests arrive, you can just pull it out of the oven and it's ready. Right. You do not put something in when people arrive that takes three hours. No. Oh gosh. So yes, you want to spend time with your friends and family, but they don't want to be held hostage at your house. So think one hour max for cocktails. You could even do 30 to 45 minutes and then move on to dinner. You're also going to want to ensure that there is some sort of level of balance between flexibility of what people can do with their time and structured time, right? Like, right. so cocktail hour, free floating people throughout the house, whatever it may be, but dinner time scheduled. 
everyone is seated at the same time and we're all eating together. So have a nice balance there and do not, do not hold your guests hostage for that no. amount of time. Um, you can consider shaving some time off of this by having fewer drink options. So just, you know, I've opened a bottle of wine and I have some sparkling water, like, and just set those out so that people mm-hmm. can serve themselves and they see what the options are. Mm-hmm. Or you can have a few cocktails prepped, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm offering margaritas tonight. I've already blended them. They're ready to go. Pull the pitcher out of the freezer and yeah. say, okay, this is what we have. Would you right. like one? Right. And the answer is yes or no. It's not, oh, well, I'll have this. And your next thing you know is you're handcrafting four or five different types of drink. Right. Which no. if you're my dad, he loves that. Like he lives for it. You know, the bar is right. open and you can order whatever you want. He has the ingredients and he'll sit there and hand crack the ice. But that's just who he is. Some people are, some people like that, but that's also part of the thing, right? Like, you right. know, that's what you're going for. Whereas if this is a dinner exactly. party, it's a different thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this is my last piece of advice. This is for both people, both host and guest. Do not preemptively clear the plates from the table. So if you're the host, don't start clearing plates when there's people who are still actively eating. If you, if you finish and you see that other people are like starting to wind down, there's napkins coming up on tables. People are sitting (laughs) back in their chairs, right? Sure. Go ahead and like, give it a few minutes, you know, maybe 10 minutes after everyone's done eating, and then you can stand up and start clearing plates. The problem with doing that is that once you do your guests, if they're still eating, they're going to take that as a cue that it's time to wrap it up and they'll either rush through their food or they'll stop eating altogether. And that's not what you want. You don't want anyone to feel rushed with their food, right? Right. Yeah. I have a rule when I host dinner that no dishes get done that night. Oh, and I even, I even say it when someone offers to help and say, Oh no, 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 no. I don't, I don't do dishes the night that I have friends over. And I, I I might have someone help me scrape plates and then stack them back on the dining table. But, um, I want to enjoy the evening as well. I'm the fun facilitator. So, um, I just, I just don't do the dishes that night. So then what do you do to, to get that out of the way? Like if, if dishes are on the table, do you just move to a different location in the house? Yeah. So I say, let's go to the living room and have dessert, or we're going to have dessert on the patio, um, and just move to another space for dessert and coffee. Um, I just leave it and say, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it tomorrow. It'll all be there. Love that idea. That's brilliant. If you are the guest and the host is sitting and enjoying their guests and not moving, don't stand up and start cleaning up. No. Again, then the host feels like they haven't done their job of keeping things moving and all of that. You're going to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, other people will start to feel like they have to clean up. Like, just don't bother. The other thing is, um, it is okay to offer your host a hand with cleanup. Yeah. I encourage In fact, that. It's expected. Right. However, if they decline your offer and they say, oh, no, 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 just sit tight as Jenny just explained, she does with her guests, sit tight. Like don't, don't just start doing it. Um, it makes people feel uncomfortable when you do that. And they're probably telling you that for a reason. Maybe they're going to wait till the next day to clean up. Maybe they have someone coming to help them to take care of it later. You don't know what the circumstances are, but you definitely offer. Those dishes might not go in the dishwasher. Right. You offer to help and then you, you know, if they say, if you just want to stack them or you want to grab the wine glasses and just bring them into the kitchen and then leave it there, that's what you do. You always follow your host's lead. Do not go above and beyond what they tell you to do. And if they tell you to leave the dish at the table, it's going to make you uncomfortable, but you're going to leave the dish at the table. Right. Yeah. Now, if they accept your offer, Mm -hmm. follow their lead again. Mm-hmm. because you can say, okay, I'll wash and you dry. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want me to help you put the food away? Mm-hmm. Get a, a specific task mm-hmm. because they probably have a, a routine in their mind about how this is going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is you could always start by saying, oh, can I take out the trash for you? Oh, that's a good one. Because for me... chances are the trash is full because yep. they've been cooking it all day. Yep. Um, 
or the trash is full because you just scraped plates. Mm -hmm. And so that's an easy task that you can't really screw up. Right. And the host can pass on to you feeling good about it. Right. For me, I, I mean, this is going to come as a surprise to many people, especially you, but I like things to be done just so, right? (laughs) (laughs) Surprise, surprise. So for me, if I have someone who's like loading the dishwasher for me, I play dishwasher Tetris, so I'm going to go back in and rearrange what you did in the dishwasher. Right. Right. Like it's going to bother me. Um, I, I also don't like to be fielding questions about, oh, where does this dish go? Where does that dish go after you've dried them off? So I'm just going to tell you to stack them. Right. So for me, it's, if I'm telling you, oh no, 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 don't worry about it. I mean, don't worry about it because otherwise I'm going to go back in and fix it anyway. So please just, just leave it, just leave it alone for me. Right. It's fine, so, but you can I definitely like take out ask, the trash. It's fine. Is there a task I can do that doesn't take more mental energy to describe to me than it would yes. for you to just do it yourself? Right. Taking out the trash is one of those things. Yeah. Bringing the recycling out to the recycling bin is one of those things. Right. That's a great task for anyone who asks, how can I help? Oh, you can take the trash out. Perfect. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> oh, it's great. Love it. Okay. So to recap, I've given you... Eight, is that eight, right? Is that right? Eight, eight things that you should do as a dinner party host or guest. So we're going to say uh, your main rule is to not offend people, right? So don't offend your host who invited you to their house and don't offend your guests by making them feel uncomfortable. Don't be pushy with dietary restrictions. Don't use cloth napkins to clean up any red wine spills. Don't bring a gift that requires fridge space. Don't show up fashionably late to a dinner party. Don't spend all of your time in the kitchen if you're a host. Don't put your couples together. You want to facilitate fun and conversation. Don't hold your guests hostage like Jan Levinson (laughs) from the the office. (laughs) And don't start cleaning up too soon. Always follow your host's lead when it comes to the cleanup process and and leaving their home. Right? (sighs) Well... This is the part of the show where I tell you, if you liked us, you should tell the world and um, give us that five-star review, write something nice about us, um, consider us your host, and that's your way of thanking us for the evening, um, and make good choices. Bye, babe. Bye, babe. (laughs) Don't be a Jan. Okay, bye. Hey friends, thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate review and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.